Hey, well, thank you for joining me for our lecture today in a virtual format. I hope you and your family stay safe through the, through the storm. Uh, so th th today we're going to c continue working through Acts. There is a quiz that you will need to take. Uh, you'll take it on Blackboard. You don't need to use Respondus Lockdown Browser for the quiz, but you will need a password. And I'm going to give you that password, well, somewhere in the middle of this video. So you'll need to watch the video and I will tell you the password. Uh, and so be sure when you get the password, write it down and, and then you can take the quiz after you have, have the password. Um, that's to encourage you to watch the video all the way through, right? And to pay attention while you're watching the video. You should take notes while watching the video. Pretend like you're in class doing it as a lecture. I mean, you could speed it up, you can pause, you can, uh, there's nice things about it being on video, uh, but don't push mute, right? That ruins it. Um, let's see, uh, so, so I talked about the quiz. There's also a discussion board post uh, that is actually under week five, uh, which was when you were taking the, the exam, uh, but, but so it's still posted there. You can still take it or you can still do this discussion board post. I'd like you, to, in the discussion board post is, is to talk about what is, I want you to write a, a couple paragraphs, not, not just a short one, like this is a longer post, uh, and it's to help you get a start on the essay. It's like a pre-writing assignment for the essay. I want you to write about what does Jesus teach about the kingdom of God? Uh, and, and what, 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 so essentially the four gospels and the message of the kingdom of God. Uh, and in two paragraphs, you won't be able to write everything, right? But, but I want you to give two, uh, two good solid paragraphs and maybe those will help you be on your way uh, to your essay. And you can test out your ideas with others in the class. And, and then I want you to respond and, and respond to someone's post that you learned something from their post. Look at the assignment on the uh, on Blackboard and follow those instructions. It, it's under, I think there's several ways you can get to it. One, you can find the discussion board and you can find the forum that's about Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount. And But I also, the easiest way is probably to click on week five and, and it's under there. It will count as an assignment. Uh, some of you have already done it, uh, it but if you haven't, uh, go ahead and do that as part of the replacement class. Um, uh, but but now we're moving on from the Gospels, uh, still looking back to them all, all the time, uh, but we're uh, talking through Acts. And, and last uh, our last class period made it up to about Acts 7 or 8 and introduced uh, Stephen. Stephen was one of the men that was chosen to take care of the, the Greek uh, widows who'd been neglected. But he was a man full of faith and uh, full of the Holy Spirit. And he was falsely accused uh, and brought before the, before the Jews and before the high priest. He was falsely accused of saying blasphemous things. And then, uh, but then he proclaimed, he, he preached a sermon that takes, that, that did across the entire Old Testament uh, and pointing to how Jesus Christ is, is the Messiah. Uh, and, and he made some accusatory statements to them about how they killed the Messiah. But then he looks up, uh, and he see and Jesus receive he sees Jesus as he's being stoned and that but in the there's a young man there named Saul who was uh, involved in killing Stephen um, by stoning that becomes important later um, so okay so that that's where we left left off last time um, but now we're moving into uh, chapter eight and and so chapter eight well it it begins with uh let's, let's go ahead and look at the scripture uh so it begins with the persecution that breaks out the, the saul killing stephen and then a great persecution breaks out in jerusalem and this scatters uh the new christian community everyone except the apostles the apostles stay in jerusalem uh, but but the rest uh begin scattering um so philip he he's one like stephen he was one of those uh, men who is chosen to, to serve among the Greeks, but he goes to Samaria and he's preaching the gospel in Samaria and, and doing miracles and, and many saw and, and the gospel was received. Uh, Peter and John, they, they heard about um, this uh, and they, they, 
they go up to uh, and, and they, they see that the uh, the Holy Spirit is coming to the uh, Samaritans um, but there's there's a magician uh, a sorcerer there who named Simon and and he was also listening to the gospel entering interested and he, and he sees uh, when, when the apostles come and they lay their hands on uh, the, the, the the Samaritans, um, then the Holy Spirit uh, comes on the Samaritans. When when Simon sees that, you know he he's believed, he's been baptized, but now he comes, he approaches Peter and says, "I'd like this power too. Uh, I want to buy uh, the the power. How much is it going to cost for you to teach me this?" Uh, this or give me this ability so I can I can give the Holy Spirit to others, and uh, so th- then Peter uh, he says, uh, "May your silver and gold be destroyed with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You've got no part or share in this matter, because your heart isn't right with God." You see, the Holy Spirit. It's not like a magic trick. He's not someone that can be bought and sold. You know, buying and selling persons, that's something that's not right. Buying and selling God is even worse. Uh, so uh, th- th- this story is here in Acts 8 to, t- to show us, that, that, well, the power of the Holy Spirit, but he's not something to be traded and bought and sold. The Holy Spirit's a free gift given to all, all who believe. Um, so, so, but here we see though the Samaritans are coming to faith and being filled with the Holy Spirit, not not just the Jews. Uh, so, and this is fulfilling what Jesus said back in Acts one eight. Do you remember Acts one eight is the uh, key verse for the book of Acts? It says, "You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and and to be my witnesses first in Jerusalem." So we saw that up through chapter 7. But here in chapter 8, see now the gospel's going to Samaria and then and then all the way to the ends of the earth. And we'll get there in chapter 13 uh, and following. Um, so this this is the middle section uh, is, is, is showing us how the gospel's gone out beyond Jerusalem, now to the Samaritans. And then to uh, Philip, then a- a- after being in Samaria, and the messenger of the Lord, or the angel, angel means a messenger. Uh, so the messenger of the Lord spoke to Philip and said, uh, go, go down to this road uh, that's down between Jerusalem and Gaza. It's, it's a desert road out in the middle of nowhere. And as he goes, he sees a chariot. Uh, and there's a, a, a man from Ethiopia uh, in, the, in the chariot. And, and the, the spirit tells uh, Philip to go up to the chariot. So Philip uh, gets up to the, the chariot and the man in the ch- is reading uh, the, the prophet Isaiah. And, and Philip says, well, uh, do you understand what you're reading? And the, the man says, how, how can I unless someone guides me? So, so this man that Philip sits with, uh, he's uh, an Ethiopian and, and he's a eunuch. And that, that word eunuch is probably uh, something I, I, I need to explain to you a bit. So, uh, so, so here you can see the word uh, eunuch. Uh, it's a little embarrassing to explain this, uh, but some of you, some of you might know what this means, and some of you don't know what it means. But a eunuch is a man who's had his male parts uh, removed. Uh, so he's he's had his uh, it, 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 it often is by crushing. Maybe maybe they did a surgery. It couldn't have been pretty back in the day, uh, but but the the man had had his male parts taken off uh, and crushed. Now the thing about being a eunuch, you know, and this man was, wasn't Jewish; he was he was from Ethiopia, uh, but he was coming to Jerusalem. So so he was he was a God fearer, uh, and uh, but he he wouldn't have been allowed to enter the temple. And and in Deuteronomy. Uh, so in the Old Testament, there's there's a very clear law saying that if if any man has had his uh, t- testicles crushed um, or his male part removed, that he is not allowed to to enter into the the, the presence of God in, into the into the temple. Um, and so, um, so 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 he, and, and this man is just is leaving from Jerusalem. We don't know exactly what he faced. 
uh, face there. But he, he has a copy of the scroll of Isaiah, and he, he's reading that. And, and this is what he reads. He, he reads, He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. Uh, I wonder if he's thinking about when he was being led towards, uh, what, you know, back when he was young, probably a child. We don't know exactly when this happened to him, but and someone took him, and, uh, and, and it was for official purposes. You see, he was serving the queen of Ethiopia. And, and so people who were around queens and royalty, that was often the, the people that were forced to become eunuchs. And, and I wonder if what he was thinking when he was reading in a, as a lamb before its shears are silent. Uh, in his humiliation, justice was denied him. Uh, and who will describe his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. And as he's reading this, he, he says, Philip, he says, I ask you, who is he talking about? Is he talking, is he talking about himself or is he talking about someone else? Uh, and I think the Ethiopian eunuch was relating, was, was thinking about the justice that had been denied to him. I mean, he was in a position of power, or he had a, of authority because he, he was close to the queen there, but um, it was at a great cost. Uh, well, so, so the, the, so he, so Philip says, well, he, he, he's talking about Jesus, and he explains to him that this is about the good news of Jesus as Messiah and teaches him about Jesus. And as they're traveling, then down the road, there's some water there, and they see the water, and the, the, the Ethiopian says, uh, what would stop me? Is there anything that would stop me from being baptized? Now, I wonder, why is he using, thinking stop me? I think it's because he's experienced being stopped and not, uh, like maybe he was stopped from going into the temple, not allowed into God's presence. Um, but nothing can stop him from being baptized. That, that belief in Jesus, see, you see, being an Ethiopian doesn't exclude him. Being a eunuch doesn't exclude him. The Ethiopian eunuch can believe in Jesus and, and can be baptized. Uh, and can also be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so so he and Philip go down into the water and come out. And we see it's very clear that they go into the water and then they come up out of the water. And that's the meaning of baptism, to be immersed. Uh, and so they're bapt so, so he's baptized. And after he's baptized, the Spirit takes uh, Philip uh, uh, away to another town where he continues preaching the gospel from town to town. Uh, and the Ethiopian continues on with joy. And that's all we hear about him. But this is showing us uh, this um, a theme that we've seen in across the New Testament. Uh, but that the Gentiles are included in the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. That they uh, that, that the kingdom of God includes Samaritans and the Ethiopians. And then Peter learns this lesson uh, in chapter ten. So in in Acts chapter ten, uh, P- Peter. Well, well, first it starts with Cornelius. Cornelius is a Roman centurion, and he it was a good man. He was uh, he he would pray. He 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 respected the God of the Jews. He, he was a God fearer, uh, but 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 he wasn't a Jew. He he was a Roman, and uh, but the the messenger of the Lord, an angel, comes to Cornelius and says, Cornelius, your an- prayer has been answered. Uh, you are to go send for Peter. He's staying down at Joppa at the, the, the at, at, at Simon's house, a ta- Tanner, whose house is by the sea. So uh, Peter, uh, so, so Cornelius sends a group down uh, there to look for Peter. Um, Peter, uh, meanwhile, is go- having his time of prayer. And while he is praying, he falls into a, a trance or a, a, like, and has a vision, and he sees the sheet coming down out of heaven, like, or a net, and the net's covered with all sorts of uh, unclean animals. See, the Jewish law, there, there were some things you could eat, some things you couldn't. Some animals were considered unclean and, and weren't to be eaten, like pigs were the worst. But there were many others, and all of these animals that were unclean were on this sheet. And Peter hears God's voice say, uh, Peter, take this up and eat it. And Peter says, "No, Lord, I've only eaten. Cl- I've never eaten something unclean before." And, and the Lord says to Peter, "Don't say something is unclean that I've made clean." 
And so Peter has this, this vision uh, just at the right time. And then he has an, an, the knock at the door and it's Cornelius's friends. And see, God was t- preparing Peter to see that the Gentiles are included in, in, in among his uh, people. So, so Peter is willing to go with uh, the men, goes to Cornelius's house, meets Cornelius's family. Peter begins sharing the gospel. He, 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 Cornelius tells him about his vision. Peter tells him about his vision. And while Peter, and then Peter is telling him about Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. And while he's speaking, the Holy Spirit comes on Cornelius and his whole household. And so this Roman soldier, Roman family, a Gentile, has has received the Holy Spirit. And so here, is, is uh, Cornelius is being saved, but Peter also is learning an important lesson about God's kingdom and who's included in God's kingdom. God wanted Peter to see this, <laughs> that it's the Gentiles belong, and he wants us to see it too, that the, the kingdom of God is... Uh, well, it, it includes even those that we think shouldn't be included. Uh, so, so chapter nine, uh, <clears throat> actually, what, what, what the story of uh, Peter and Cornelius, that was in chapter 10. So I'm going to skip back just a little bit. Uh, but it's important that we do that because uh, in, in chapter nine is when the, uh, the apostle Paul or, or Saul uh, is has a, a dramatic transformation. Um, so uh, uh, Saul, he was preparing, he's, he's going from house to house, he's persecuting the Christians. He's going uh, door to door, knocking on doors like, are there any Christians in here? Uh, but, but they weren't called Christians yet. So he's looking for the followers of Jesus. Anyone who's teaching about Jesus the Messiah, he's trying to hunt people down from place to place. And they'd already, they've had to scatter and flee everywhere. But he knows some of them have gone up to Damascus, which, which was up, up to the north. Um, and, and so, so, uh, so Saul uh, get, gets preparation to go and permission to go to Damascus in order to arrest and, br- and uh, the, the, the followers away and bring them back to Jerusalem to, to persecute them and, uh, and to harm them. Uh, but on the way, on the way to Damascus, um, Saul sees a blinding light uh, in, in chapter 9. Here it is. So uh, and, and so while he's on the road, there's a, there's a light from heaven flashed on him, and he falls to the ground, and he hears a voice saying, "Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me?" And Saul says, "Well, who are you, Lord?" And he says, "I am Jesus. I am the one you are persecuting." See, uh, Saul was persecuting the church, the followers of Jesus, uh, but here we see Jesus says, "You're persecuting me." Uh, the G- Jesus feels the persecution of uh of those who follow him uh but so, so well saul is is made blind and he as he gets up the people come around him some, some of them had, had heard the voice but they, they 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 hadn't they hadn't like seen exact like they didn't understand what had happened but they could see that saul couldn't see he, he was blind and so uh and uh, Jesus had told Saul in the, to go uh, go on ahead to the city, and he'd be told what to do. And so Saul goes up into the city. Meanwhile, the messenger of the Lord, an angel of the Lord, goes to Ananias. This is a different Ananias than the one in chapter 5. But he goes to Ananias' house, and he, Ananias was one of the followers of Jesus that was up in Damascus. And he said, uh, Ananias, you're, you're to go to the uh, on Straight Street, there's a house there. There's a man there who's waiting for you. He's from Tarsus, and uh, he, he's praying there. He, he's been told, he's seen a vision that a man named Ananias is going to come uh, meet with him. Uh, and so, so his name's Saul of Tarsus. And and I said, whoa, Lord, that I, he's the one that's been coming up here. I've heard of, uh, he's hurt a lot of Christians. You want you want me to go up there? They're not called Christians yet, but he's hurt a lot of followers of the way, uh, and done lots of harm. And then the Lord says this really important statement, telling us about who Paul is. Um, says the Lord said to him, "Go, this man, meaning Saul or Paul, 
This man is my chosen instrument to take my name to the Gentiles, kings, and Israelites, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So Ananias went and put his hands on Paul and said, Brother Saul, Jesus who appeared to you on the road, he sent me that you would regain your sight and, and you would be filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, the filling of the Holy Spirit, that's an important part of the conversion. Well, So, so, so all at once, Saul's... Uh, eyes open scales fell out of his eyes he, he had been blind but now he can see and you can see uh, it, 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 that this is a metaphor it also it happened but I'm, it's also that Paul before he didn't see things correctly but now his eyes have been opened and he's seeing uh, he's seeing the truth and, and he recognizes the, the Messiah. And so he begins preaching right away and proclaiming. Um, and one, one thing that he says here, he says, uh, the, the, the verse, uh, he, he says, this is my chosen instrument to take my name to the Gentiles. And then, then uh, Ananias, or, and Jesus had said to Ananias, he said, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Uh, so, uh, oh, so right here, I must show him how much he must suffer for my name. That uh, th that begins well pretty quickly here. That Saul uh, he begins proclaiming the gospel, uh, but he, uh, he he right away the Jews are conspiring to kill him, uh, and so he he has to, to get away. Uh, now, the apostle, you can imagine, Saul had been a persecutor of the church. He'd been going, like, trying to persecute the, the Christians. Um, and so so the apostles and the disciples, you know, they, they would have been a little nervous to meet with them. They were afraid. Uh, but there was a man named Barnabas who had, uh, he, he had was convinced of Saul's change and so he takes Saul down to the apostles and introduces him and, and advocates uh, for him and, sa and t says, hey, this man has been speaking boldly about the name of Jesus. Um, and this started off a new time that the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, they had peace and were strengthened uh, strengthened in, in numbers. So so that this that is Paul's conversion hey now one thing you you might not be able to use uh, nearpod like i don't have a nearpod code that's going live uh, but you can click on the student paste nearpod under week six and click forward then to the slide we're on you could follow along that way but i'm going to keep it on in the background you could just watch there um either way is fine uh there might be a part participative thing though that uh and, and if when there is you just uh, you'll have to do the self-paced version uh, since we're doing the video. Um, okay, so so the, uh, Saul Saul is his Hebrew name. Paul is the Roman name, uh, and so he he used two names. There, it was a multilingual environment. Many people had more than one name. It seems in, in, across the New Testament that was common. Uh, we, we tend to refer to Saul, the, who persecuted the church by the name Saul, and Paul, the apostle, after his conversion. Though I'm not sure that his name change was the signal of his conversion, uh, but we tend to talk that way. So I, I'm going to refer to him as the apostle Paul uh, rather than Saul uh, from here on out, mostly. Um, so chapter 11 brings us to a real critical point. And you may want to open your Bible and, and follow along, uh, but you, you, I, I skipped a few things like a, a, a woman, uh, Tabitha, be, being raised raised to life after she died. You know, just a few little things like that. Um, but, and, but, but chapter 11 is is a critical verse so, so ch or chapter 11 verse 19 so let, let me pull that up on the screen for you we'll scroll to here we go so what what had happened here so uh so it says those who had been scattered as a result of the persecution you know Paul helped start this persecution and but that persecution then, then continued it, but, but it scattered 
Um, there is a bit of peace after Paul converted, uh, but but it, it led people, the Christians had, had to go all over the place. Um, and, and some of them made it to Phoenicia, others to Cyprus, and others to Antioch. Cyprus was an island. Antioch is, is a city uh, th- that is up, up, up in Syria. So we call it Syria Antioch. And as they went, most of the Christian, the, these new followers of Jesus, they were saying, speaking the gospel only to the Jews. But then there were some, some men uh, who is from Cyprus and from Cyrene. Now Cyprus, that's well, that, that's the island, and the, so th- that's off in the, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, Cyrene, that's a place uh, far away uh, in in North Africa, um, but s- s- some. But and Jews had been scattered there, but some of them had come and heard about Jesus, and now uh, they have gone up to Antioch. Maybe they were in Jerusalem and then got scattered up up to Antioch. And so these men from Cyprus and Cyrene, uh, they came to Antioch, and rather than just speaking the gospel to Jews, they started telling about Jesus to the Greeks. Uh, it, the others they thought, well, this is just, this is only the Jews are going to really relate to this or get this. But these men, we don't have their names, but they were, and, and, and they were themselves migrants from Cyprus and Cyrene, but they began preaching the gospel to, to Greeks. And the, the Lord's hand was with them, and a large number uh, of people came, believed and turned to the Lord. And, and the, the apostles in Jerusalem, they heard that, oh, there's some, a lot of Greeks up there, Greek-speaking people hear, hearing, like, it's not just the Hebrews, it's not just the Jews now, there's Greeks hearing the, uh, the gospel uh, and are believing. And I said, no way, we got to send somebody to check it out. So they send a man named Barnabas. And, and Barnabas, um, we, he's known as Barnabas the Encourager, he, but, but he goes up there and, and he see. So he, he goes up to Antioch, and when he arrives and he sees the grace of God and he sees it's all true, and he's so glad and he's encouraging them. So uh, Barn- we call Barnabas the encourager because he encouraged all of them to remain with in the Lord and with devoted heart. Uh, and then Barnabas goes up to Tarsus, and that's where Saul ha- was. Saul was from Tarsus. Um, he briefly met the, the apostles in Jerusalem. He went on. He may have d- done some other things. That that was actually. I know it's only chapter nine, but it was years and years and years uh, before. Um, uh, but Barnabas knows he needs Saul uh, or or, he, or Paul to come help him. So so Barnabas goes and gets Paul and says, "Hey, we got something going on in Antioch. Will you come help?" And so Paul goes to Antioch, and Barnabas and Paul for one year, a whole year, they meet with the church and teach large numbers of people. And then here, the disciples are first called Christians in Antioch. Before this time, they weren't called Christians. They were called followers of the way. They were called, called oh, they're the ones that believe Jesus. They're talking about Jesus resurrected, Jesus Messiah. But they didn't really have a name. They were thought of as a, a Jewish sect. Uh, but here, the probably be, as the Greeks come to faith, the other Greek family members like who are they are you believing in, in jews no and they came up with a new name no they're they're christians they're little christs the word christian means a little christ they're they're, they're it means a follower of the messiah that that you're they're christians so the new word christian was coined in antioch and, and this church in antioch becomes the the one of the early christian centers of of mission and one of the important uh you know, Jerusalem was an important center uh, at the beginning, but this church in Antioch uh, is going to take uh, the forefront uh, now. Uh, so, well, the, the uh, let's see, I'll go back to this slide. Yeah, to make sure you're getting these highlights points. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, and, and that church in Antioch, it was a diverse church from the beginning. Was, uh, there were Jews and Greeks and Cyprus and Cyrene, and uh, you know, and it's where, where the, the and, you know Saul was a Pharisee, uh, Barnabas was from Cyprus. You know, they're they're from uh, it, it was a mixed group. Um, they were first called Christians. They are in Antioch. In chapter twelve, uh, James, one of the apostles, not, uh, the the brother of John, uh, is uh, captured by Herod and killed. 
And then Peter is captured too. And everyone thought Peter was going to be a goner. But, and they're praying for him. It doesn't say they thought he was going to be a goner. I, th you know, I, I think if I was there, I'm kind of pessimist. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Peter's in prison, and you can see why they may have thought, because James James is, is was just killed. Um, but the Lord sends an angel to rescue Peter, and Peter c comes out of prison and then goes, uh, goes to John Mark's house, actually, here. Um, okay, but then we get to chapter 13, and ch chapter 13 of Acts is beginning a new section. Let's see, I <clears throat> make sure I give you, because uh, I changed the Nearpod slides to show this to you. Uh, so, and after Peter's out of prison, and there's another phrase at the end of chapter 12, um, says the word of God flourished and multiplied, uh, and after they completed their relief mission, Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem, taking along with them John Mark. And so John Mark was someone uh, was related to Barnabas, and uh, but Barnabas, John Mark, and uh, and Saul are some of the, are the first to leave Antioch, and that's in chapter 13. Uh, so chapter 13 uh, begins the missionary journeys of Paul uh, and uh, of Paul and Barnabas. Um, and I'm, I'm going to look for a map. I'll be right back. Uh, hold on. It probably will just be a second. Okay, so... Uh, Acts 13 then is starting kind of a, a new section, which is sh sh uh, Luke is showing us how the gospel is being proclaimed. At first, it, it had already been proclaimed in Jerusalem. Then we saw how it went to, to Samaria and Judea and kind of out farther out, up to Antioch. Uh, but now we're going to see it go from uh, Antioch out to the ends of the earth. Uh, as, and it, it's through these uh, missionary journeys that Paul and Barnabas, uh, well, they, they go together on their first missionary journey anyways. Uh, and so, so let's, I'll give you a summary of the missionary journeys, but first let's look at uh, the Acts 13 and how they're sent out. Uh, because it's the church in Antioch that sends them. So the church in Antioch, of Syria, Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, uh, and their names, uh, pay attention to the names here. Barnabas, we, we've met him. Then there's Simeon, who is called uh, Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, uh, and Manaean, a close friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. So from the names, we can see there's a bit of diversity here. Barnabas was from Cyprus. Simon, who is called Niger, so we don't know where he's from, but why is he called Niger? Because he's black. Uh, almost certainly, Niger means black. So it's Simon, who is called black. And then Lucius of Cyrene. Cyrene was in North Africa. Uh, and, you know, uh, it could be Lucius uh, was one of those who, who was preaching to Greeks at first uh, there. Uh, was, we don't know that, uh, but he, he's from Cyrene. And then Manaean, uh, who he was a politically connected guy. So th these are the elders and the prophets that the leaders in, in the new church in Antioch who'd been, uh, and they were together and they were praying and they were fasting. Uh, and while they were praying and fasting, the Holy Spirit spoke to them and said, set apart for me Paul and Barnabas for the work to which I've called them. And so they prayed and after they prayed, they put their hands, they laid their hands on Paul and Barnabas and sent them off. And Paul and Barnabas, uh, then in the Holy Spirit, they, they took John Mark with them, actually, and, and they first go to uh, Cyprus. And in so Cyprus is an island. Actually, let's see. I've, I've got a map someplace here for you. Uh, and uh, so, so this part, we're going to have to skim a little bit, not go verse by verse. Are you okay with that? Uh, we'll come back to some parts and go verse by verse, uh, but, but not quite yet. Uh, so so Paul. this launches Paul off onto three missionary journeys. The slide says three. Uh, sometimes you see people say four. Uh, and the reason why uh, sometimes is three, sometimes four, well, because if you count the, the fourth one, he's going as a prisoner on a prison boat to Rome. Um, and in one sense, though, I believe 
these missionary journeys. It, it's like Paul devotes himself to, to the missionary journey. He doesn't view it like, okay, I finished number one. Now I'm going to stop and take a breather. He, he, it's like one long journey for Paul. He, 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 but he comes back to Antioch in Jerusalem uh, several times as he's uh, on his missionary journey. And so that's how he divided into three different uh, missionary journeys. Well, his first missionary journey uh, is, is in Acts 13 through 14, 28. It tells us about it. And he first goes through Cyprus, that island. Then he goes up to Perga and uh, to Pisidian Antioch. And, the, and then through the Galatian towns of of Iconium, Lystra, and Derba, and then he goes back, uh, back in order. He goes back to Lystra, back to Iconium, back to Antioch, and then back to Perga, and then he sails back uh, home, uh, uh, back to Antioch, uh, to tell the people, uh, to to report what what had happened, that the Gentiles had believed, and wh while he's re giving this report. Uh, then some came had come up from Jerusalem who who were, were like teachers of the law. They, they were they were Christians that followed Jesus ish, uh, but they, we call them the Judaizers. They they were men who who were saying, and, and basically they said, said to Paul, "Well, you Gentiles have come to faith. Well, uh, have you circumcised them? Are they keeping the whole law?" Um, and so. Uh, this is what occasions Paul then uh, goes with Barnabas and, and they go down to Jerusalem to talk to the apostles about uh, what to do with the Gentiles. So the Jerusalem council, the main issue is circumcision. The main issue is, in circumcision is the Jewish ritual that's done usually when you're a baby, unless you didn't do it when you're a baby, then you do it when you're older and you wish you had it done when you're a baby. Uh, but uh, in which they make a circum, like a circle around your, a scission, a cut, a circle around your little male part there. Uh, and, and so that all the Jewish men did it. Uh, well, so do a Gentile who's not circumcised and becomes a follower of Jesus, do they need to be circumcised? Do they need to keep all of the Jewish laws? Uh, what, like what, what does it mean to for the Gentile to now be a follower of Jesus? And, and so there was a discussion about it. And so what do the apostles say about it? So, so Paul comes and, and, and talks, the Gentiles have come to faith. Well, so Acts chapter 15 is, is an important uh, one to, to, uh, to talk about. And, and essentially, uh, the, what uh, the, for, first Peter gets up and speaks and he says listen you know the, the Lord's shown me that I, I should share the gospel with the Gentiles and uh, we, we shouldn't make it difficult for them uh, that because we're saved uh, by the, the, in the same way that they are by belief in in the name of Jesus and and that the, their salvation's the same as ours. So, uh, so Peter's saying no, they should not be sir. They don't have to be circumcised. Uh, then James, and this isn't the James that died a little bit ago. Uh, this is James, a different James. But this is James, the brother of Jesus. Actually, he now has joined in the group and taking a leadership, a, a leadership role in the groups. And, and James uh, stands up and, and says. Uh, that we should not make it difficult on the Gentiles. So, so the apostles in Jerusalem say they don't need to be circumcised. But they say it doesn't mean that you don't keep any of the law. Like still stay away from idols. Stay, uh, don't, uh, don't, don't eat stuff that's been with blood in it and, and sexual immorality. Like, like we're not saying anything goes here. Uh, but you don't have to, uh, to, to, do, to keep the Jewish, uh, the, the circumcision uh, uh, and, and law. essentially they're saying you don't have to become Jewish to be a follower of Jesus um, they're affirming that, that salvation is by, by faith in Jesus Christ it, it's, it's, a, it's by grace not by keeping the law uh, so uh, this your next reading assignment is going to be from the book of Galatians Galatians uh, and so the password the password for the exam uh, this is going to confuse you, uh, because or not it's not an exam. The password for the quiz. So so the quiz it, it, the the quiz is titled so it's like the quiz on Acts and on chapter seven uh, from the book. 
and the password you need, I'm going to call it Galatians. So the password you need to write is Galatians. Uh, if you want to know how to spell Galatians, look it up in, in, in your Bible, in the table of contents. You need to spell it the way it's spelled in the Bible and capitalize the first letter. So it needs to be a capital G uh, and, and then spell out Galatians. The rest of it isn't capital. That's your password. I hope that's not too complicated. Also, there's not questions about Galatians on the little quiz. Uh, so, so, so don't be worried about that. It just seems like a good word to have chosen. Uh, so uh, that's the, uh, hopefully you all caught that. Did you catch the password? If not, push pause, rewind. I just gave the password. You need it for the quiz. Uh, I hope you finished the video. I still got some good stuff here. Good stuff. Keep going ahead. Um, so uh, the, the Paul's first missionary journey, then he, he, he he reports back to Antioch, and then then, to, then they have the Jerusalem Council, and the apostles uh, affirm Paul's ministry to the Gentiles, and, and they write a letter saying, hey, you don't have to be circumcised, uh, and uh, like welcoming them uh, to uh, following Jesus. And, and um, But also, somebody else writes a letter. So the apostle Paul writes a letter to back to the churches that he visited on that first missionary journey, this is where he writes the book of Galatians, or the, the letter, and it's a letter back to those churches in Iconium, Lystra, Derba, the the new disciples and believers there, and he's concerned that they have already departed from the gospel, and people are, uh, and they're turning to to follow the law, and there's people there trying to make them get circumcised, and and Paul's. So Paul is dealing with the same issue that was dealt with at the Jerusalem Council, but he doesn't mention the Jerusalem Council. I'm interesting. Well, so 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 Galatians he writes between that first and second missionary journey. Well, then in Acts 15 he goes back and he visits Galatia first. He goes back through those places where he went on his first missionary journey, uh, but this time he, he he goes overland to get there, uh, and 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 then uh, he goes up to Troas, which is up on the coast. Uh, and and let's see. Let, why don't I'm going to show you a map in a minute and go over it in detail. Uh, but but he crosses over into Europe, in, into Macedonia, and then in Greece and in, in, in Achaia, uh, and and then and then he comes back. That ends the second journey. Uh, and then on the third journey, he goes back through Galatia again and revisits people. He spends quite a bit of time in Ephesus, two maybe three years in Ephesus writing uh, letters uh, he writes some letters to the Corinth to to the church in Corinth uh, and, th and then he he visits the the churches that he'd started on his second missionary journey uh, and then he goes back to Jerusalem and on his way back to Jerusalem they say hey you're going to uh, uh, a prophet uh, has, has that said you're gonna face trouble there and so people say don't don't go back and but Paul's he, he says I'm, I'm gonna go back he, he, he knows uh, and, and he gets arrested when he's in Jerusalem. Uh, that's his final journey. Uh, and, and so his final missionary journey, it's a Roman prison boat that takes him and takes him to Rome, which is the very center and heart of the Roman Empire where the gospel can really go out from there. And while he's in prison in Rome, he's preaching the gospel and he, unhindered. Uh, so that, that's a, a quick summary of Paul's missionary journeys. Hey, but here's a question I want you to answer. Uh, this question, uh, if you're doing the self-paced Nearpod, you'll be able to answer it. If not, I just want you to pause the the, the uh, video after I read the question and write it down someplace. Just to see if you know it. So before Paul converted to follow Jesus, who was he? What did he do? So you can push pause now. Pause. There you go. Okay. Well, now you're back because you you unpaused. You probably didn't, did you? You really ought to answer the question. But so, who is Paul before he converted? Follow Jesus. He was not a tax collector. Uh, somebody put that down in one of the other classes. Uh, he was not. Uh, well, I don't know. He he was. So let me tell you who he was. He was a Pharisee. He he was from Tarsus. He's also a Roman citizen. Uh, but he was a persecutor. He was zealous for the law. He's, he wanted, 
he, he respected the law of Moses. Uh, he, he loved the David and the, the prophets. And, and he was a Pharisee. He'd been trained in, to teach the law. His righteousness surpassed all others. Uh, and, and he didn't like hearing this false teaching about Jesus the Messiah. So he was a persecutor of uh, the followers of Jesus. And, uh, so, so he was a persecutor, the least likely person you'd think uh, to be called to be the, the, the missionary, but he's the greatest missionary. I mean, Jesus is the greatest one God sent to us, but, but, but he, uh, Paul is the, the, the missionary example, exemplar of the, the New Testament um, after his conversion. Uh, so this map shows you a little bit about his journey. I think I'm going to move over here to this side of the page. Uh, so first, I want to show you some things on the map. Some of you are not so good at maps, and you got to work on this. You see the Mediterranean Ocean here is the big blue part. Uh, it's hard to get the way I got this set up. I really have to kind of just guess with the arrow. There's the Mediterranean Ocean. Uh, Jerusalem is down here um, in the bottom right-hand corner, if you see that. Uh, that's where Jerusalem is. Uh, Antioch, Syria, Antioch. This is where the for the j church was started. That's that then sent out Paul and Barnabas on the missionary journey. That's up here. Uh, see, way far north. Uh, Paul's hometown, Tarsus, is up here. Yeah, uh, Jesus's whole life was down here. You know, we're we're getting kind of far away from there. Um, well, so their first missionary journey, they go through Cyprus, and they come up here, and in uh, chapter uh, 13, uh, they, they get to Antioch, and that's a little confusing, because notice there are two Antiochs. We got Antioch in Syria here, and then up here, this is Antioch in Pisidia, is this word right here, the province of Roman province of Pisidia. So we call this one Pisidian Antioch, this one Syrian Antioch. Oh, I, my arrow's in the wrong spot. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm video challenged. Here we go. This is the Syrian one. Now I think you're seeing it in the right spot. This is Syrian Antioch. This is Pisidian Antioch. You get, get it? Do you see it there? Uh, so Paul has gone from this Antioch to that Antioch. Like, why is everything called Antioch? Well, you know, there's another city named Charleston in West Virginia, uh, and it's got the same name as our Charleston. It's probably named after our Charleston. It was back before, you know, back in the day, people couldn't just fly everywhere, and the world w was felt a little bigger and farther apart. Um, so Antioch is named after one of the Roman emperors or generals, uh, Antiochus, and uh, so both cities took... Uh, were named after him uh, and it just makes it so you got to think a little bit um, but this one we call the Syrian Antioch so Paul gets to this Antioch uh, in chapter 13 and let's take a moment and read that uh, right here so uh, so so yeah he's from Paphos went to Persia and Pamphylia oh, no. here we go so they continue their journey from Perga and went and reach Pisidian Antioch. And on the Sabbath day, they go into a synagogue and they sat down and they, uh, after they read the law, then they invite Paul to speak. And Paul preaches, a, he stands up and preaches a sermon. He preaches a sermon uh, starting with uh, the, the ancestors, with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, and, and how Moses led the people out of Egypt. He's, he's beginning with the Jewish scriptures, uh, but all of his sermon then is pointing to uh, Jesus. Uh, that uh, here to Jesus' resurrection as to his raising him from the dead uh, ne never to return uh, from decay so he's, he's talking about Jesus' resurrection uh, he, he says but this isn't it's not David who's resurrected uh, this, this, is, this is Jesus um, and so the, the people in Antioch uh, so wherever Paul goes that's one of the patterns he, he goes into a synagogue first and preaches Jesus uh, to the Jews, that he's the Messiah, he died and rose rose from the dead. Uh, and they they urge him to stay another week, say, we want to hear you next week. But the next week, there's a bigger crowd there, 
but the Jews are stirring up trouble. They're angry. They're arguing with Paul. They're contradicting Paul. And Paul says, okay, I tried to tell you. I talked to you first, uh, but, but, uh, um, but here it says, it was necessary the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, we're turning to the Gentiles. And so then Paul begins speaking to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles rejoiced. They honored the word of God, and many of them believed. Uh, and the, the word of the Lord spreading throughout all the region there around uh, in, in Pisidia, which is right next to, 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 where, to Galatia. And so after, on, on his missionary journey, well, he goes through Iconium. Again, uh, uh, he goes to the synagogue as usual, uh, and both some Jews and Greeks, Jews and Greeks both believed, but some others stirred up trouble, and he has to leave uh, there, and he goes to Lystra, where he, he's actually, Paul and Barnabas are worshipped as gods uh, there, uh, the, 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 the thinking that they were Zeus and, and uh, may, maybe, maybe another god coming down in, in human form, uh, in Hermes, that's what it was. Uh, but so, so Paul has to try to stop them from worshiping him. So he's facing missionary problems here. Uh, but and and then and then after and then he goes down to Derby and wherever he goes, as people believe, and and he he's making disciples and he's starting churches. And a, after he's gone down there, then then they return, uh, and they return uh, back. Uh, so, so after they preached the gospel in that town, made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, then to Iconium, then again to Antioch and Pisidia, strengthening the disciples by encouraging them to continue in the faith, telling them it's necessary to go through lots of trouble in, in order to enter the kingdom of God. And that when they appointed elders, like pastors, in, for them in every church, they prayed with fasting and they committed them to the Lord in whom they believed. See, Paul was church planting. He was starting churches. I teach church planting. Some of you want to learn about, about starting churches, what the church is. Um, you know, we have a major in that. Uh, so uh, then, But then Paul goes back uh, to Antioch in, uh, in Syria. Where the and, and I've already talked about this with you, and and that, that and that's what brings us to the Jerusalem Council. Um, do you remember what that is? If not, go ahead and read here in Acts 15. But it's when they are talking about do the new Christians, these Gentiles, need to be circumcised and follow the whole law? But that they decide no, they don't have to. That we don't need to trouble them. And they send a letter to them. So that was Paul's first missionary journey. Hey, we need to start wrapping this thing up uh, here pretty soon. I know you're like, yes, you need to wrap this up. Uh, so let's look at the, the map again. Uh, yeah, so, so that was Paul's first missionary journey. And it's after that is when he writes the letter to Galatians. So I want you to go ahead and read, uh, read Galatians. Uh, and th then we will, um, and, and we're going to read Paul's letters in order, in the order in which he wrote them. So that's Romans is the first in the Bible. So after Acts comes Romans, uh, but uh, Paul writes Galatians first. So we're reading, we're gonna read Galatians first and I'm gonna help you to read uh, the books in order. So follow the syllabus of what books to read and what chapters to read. And we're gonna come back and kind of look at Acts as we go through those letters. So you can see how Paul's life and, and his letters fit together. Um, so. Paul's second missionary journey, I guess, will, we, we, we'll, oh my goodness, I lost it. There it is. His second missionary journey, just real quickly. So see, he goes back up to uh, Derby, Lystra, Iconium, places he visited before in, in Galatia. And then he goes to Troas, and he has, actually has a dream there of a, he says the Holy Spirit won't let him. He wants to go share the gospel in Asia, but the Holy Spirit won't let him. Uh, he thinks, well, let's go over to Bithynia. Jesus won't let him go there. Or to my Asia, he says, you can't stay here. But he has a dream of a man from Macedonia saying, come over here and help us. This is Macedonia up here. Macedonia, that's where uh, Philip the Great was from there. And he united Macedonia and 
and the Greek peninsula here, and his son Alexander then goes conquers the world. That happened 400 some 400 years before this or so. Uh, the 350. It was a while back before the time of Paul, uh, but th that that's what Macedonia was the center of Greek culture, right? Um, well, so Paul goes then from uh, he he sails across here and lands in a little place called Philippi. He, so he goes to Philippi, then he he has to leave Philippi and goes to Thessalonica, and there's a riot there. He gets chased out of town, uh, and then he. Uh, he, he goes to Berea, and, and then he has he he comes farther south, and, and he sends people back to check on the Thessalonians. Uh, but he visits Athens and Corinth, these cities here. Uh, and Corinth, we're gonna some of these names: Corinth, Thessalonica, Philippi. That's we have Paul's letters. He writes to the Philippians, to the Thessalonians, and to the Corinthians. Uh, so we can see that. Uh, so he, he first met them on the second missionary journey, and he's sharing the gospel and planting churches wherever he goes. Um, then he crosses back over here to Ephesus, uh, just briefly, uh, and and uh, then, then comes back to uh, Caesarea. Uh, and that ends his second missionary journey. Uh, so his third missionary journey is uh, begins in chapter 18. Uh, and on his on his third missionary journey, he's going to once again go back through Galatia, uh, but it doesn't tell us a lot. You know, there's not a lot of detail. Basically, he says he goes through there, uh, but then he goes to Ephesus, and while he's and, and he stays in Ephesus for a couple of years, and while he while he's in Ephesus, eventually there's a big riot in Ephesus, and he has to leave. Uh, but those years while he's in Ephesus, he's writing letters back and forth to Corinth. Um, uh, from Ephesus, then he goes back and he visits the places back in Macedonia and Greece and back to Corinth, and then he comes back the way he came. And so, so, so this third missionary journey, he's pretty much going to the places he'd been before, revisiting them, and then he comes back down here to right behind my head. I can't get out of the way that way, but I can do this way. Uh, he comes back to Jerusalem, but it's in Jerusalem that he gets arrested. Uh, and that leads to his fourth missionary journey, which he goes by prison boat. So some things to note about Paul, and I know I am finishing up here. Uh, so some patterns of mission in looking at Paul's missionary journeys. He traveled with others. Uh, so so he, he took with, on his second missionary journey, he picks up a, a young man named Timothy who goes with him. Uh, he, Luke uh, joins with him. Uh, that, that's in chapter 16. There, there's some... Pro, uh, pronoun changes that help see oh that's where the author joins in with Paul um, but as he's going you know he traveled with Barnabas and with John Mark uh, they split off though um, so but but he was mentoring others and when he went to a place he would go into the synagogue first or and if there wasn't a synagogue he'd go to another religious meeting place like a place of prayer and he but he, and when he would go he would always proclaim Jesus Christ so he'd t share the gospel with them and he would persuade people Jesus is the Christ wherever he went some people would accept the message and some would reject it um, and depending on who he's talking to he gave uh, he always talked about the resurrection of Jesus but he began in different places so in Acts 13 he's talking he's speaking in a synagogue a Jewish synagogue so he talks a lot about the law in Acts 17 he's speaking in Athens to to a Greek elite um, like a center of Greek philosophy there and so he uses Greek poets there and he doesn't mention the, the Jewish law because they wouldn't have known it but but in both he he's uh, pointing them to the, Jesus the Messiah who suffered and then resurrected um, and wherever he went some would accept the message but also some would reject it and then they would persecute him and he faced persecution and over and over like he learned how to suffer he suffered for the name of Jesus. And he, if people accepted, they, he would stay with them and he would teach those who were willing to receive it. If people rejected it, he would just move on. And, and as Paul went back, he, he kept going back to the same places he'd been in order to, to, to strengthen the disciples and he appointed elders or leaders. So he, it wasn't that he maintained, maintained control of all the churches in these places, uh, but he appointed local leaders 
or elders uh, in each of these places. And so those are some of Paul's patterns of mission. It, it, the last part of Acts then is about his, his final missionary journey uh, or his, his prison journey, his final journey. Uh, when, when, it, it, it's his final journey in Acts. Uh, Acts doesn't end at the end of Paul's life. His life continues on beyond the end of Acts. Um, but he's arrested in Jerusalem. His trial uh, is, uh, you know, the, there's attempts on his life while he's on, on trial. And, and like, he's moved up from, from Jerusalem, then he's sent up to Caesarea, but in prison. And, and uh, as he, he's brought before kings, uh, when, when he's on trial, the main focus of Luke is how he shared the gospel. He shares about his conversion story uh, two different times uh, to, in, in order, he, because he's being asked, like, why are you doing this? Who are you? And so, but he's explaining uh, who, who Jesus is uh, and, to, and how he used to be a, 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 like, a, the, a, a, like a Pharisee uh, who was even persecuting the Christians. Uh, but then he, how he became a follower of Jesus. He tells that story all the time. Well, eventually, he, he, he's, he's actually fearing for his life, and, and he says, uh, I appeal to Caesar, send me to Caesar. And so because he's a Roman citizen, he has that right to do that. And so he gets put on a prison boat to go to Rome. On the way, he, he's even in a shipwreck. But God's with him and, and protects him. And allow, because he's, so that he's sharing, this is all part of God's plan for the gospel to go to the ends of the earth. Uh, and so the book of Acts ends with Paul in Rome proclaiming the gospel with all boldness and without any hindrance. Um, so that, that's the end of Acts and almost the end of this uh, video. Uh, the, uh, one thing to point out is while Acts is mostly historical narrative, there's 10 sermons, 10 major sermons recorded throughout Acts. Uh, Peter speaks three of them in which he's sharing the gospel. Stephen shares the gospel in a long sermon in chapter 7. Paul speaks in, in, uh, in Antioch in chapter 13 and Athens in chapter 17 and to, to the elders in Ephesus in chapter 20. And we have some Paul's, some Paul's speeches. And then uh, when Paul's on trial, he, he's three times is uh, sharing the gospel and, and giving speeches. So 22% uh, of the content of Acts is speeches. So it's historical narrative, but Luke is also writing the words of Peter, Stephen, and Paul so that we can hear the gospel also. Hey, so uh, when you, we come back to the class, we're going to be talking about Galatians. So I want you to read the book of Galatians and be ready for a quiz. And hopefully that reminds you of what the password is. Uh, I said it in the middle. You'll have to rewind if you, you missed it. Uh, I hope the quiz you take on Acts today goes well. Uh, don't forget your discussion board. And I'll, I'll see you after the storm.